to another episode here on Hall Family Farms. I'm so glad you could join me today. We have a beautiful day. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'm located in South Central Virginia, latitude 37.03 degrees, and I'm in U.S. Agricultural Growing Zone 7B. So that's where I am. We've got an exciting day today. Lots of projects here. We are in the middle of spring now. Welcome back to another exciting episode here on Hall Family Farms. I'm so glad you could be with me today. We have a beautiful, beautiful spring day. The high is supposed to be about 83 degrees. We're out here this morning. We've got a nice soft breeze and we've got lots of things to do, all of which we may not get done today on camera. But I do want to bring you in closer at our working table here so you can see some of the things we've got going on and then I'll talk about some of the other things that will be kind of a preview of things to come. So come on in and take a closer look. All right, now that I've got you in closer, I'm gonna try to show you some of the things we've got going on today. So as you can see here, I've got a bundle of strawberries that need to be planted today. This particular variety is Parker's Whopper Strawberry, and it came in a package of 20. Uh, the location it desires full sun, bloom time mid-spring through late spring. So it's a June-bearing crop. It gets to a height of about six inches, and of course it was delivered as bare root plants. So we need to find a location in our garden and get those planted today. The other thing we've got going on, as you can see here, I have two little Concord grape vines that I have harvested and these are for a good friend of mine and a former colleague. And so we're gonna pot those up so that we can give those to her to plant in her yard. So we've got that to do. That will probably be item number one and the strawberries will be item number two. We've got a lot of other projects and I'll talk about those maybe at the end of this video. Okay, I think before we get our thumbs brown and dirty, we're gonna start by labeling two of our red Sobo cups so that my good friend and former colleague Heather will know what this particular variety is. So I'm going to just write on here, Concord Grapevine. All right. Same thing for this one. Okay, so now that we have our cups labeled, we'll set those aside. I'm gonna need two cups with some drainage holes. The reason why we're not putting drainage holes in the outer cups is so that when we water it, we'll be able to have something that will catch the water. So take our drill here and okay and I uh, like to put four holes in my solo cups for drainage. 
So there you have it. All right, so let's get some soil in these. All right, I filled them approximately halfway here. So we'll take our grapevine, and I've already given it kind of a root pruning. And in fact, we'll leave it just like that. We'll put the roots in here. and get some more soil around it. Okay, there we go. There's one. Let's get this other one in here. We'll do the same thing. Place it in our cup here. Get our roots in there. and get some more soil around it. Okay, now this soil is already a little bit moist and Rob, if you're watching, got my thumbs brown, got them dirty, playing in the dirt here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give these a drink. I'm gonna place them over in my shade nursery so that they'll have a chance to get acclimated to their new homes. So let me get these watered. Okay. Before we get to those strawberries, I wanted to give you another update on our winter sowing method. So this happens to be one of the containers that we use the duct tape and hinge method before discovering our good friend from the middle of the map, Nick Thomas's simplified winter sowing method using no tape and sliding the top of the milk container over the bottom so you know you live and you learn and that's why we do this we learn from each other so anyway take a look i don't know if you can see this on the camera i'm going to try to tilt this over i don't know whether you can see what i'm seeing but this if you haven't guessed already is a flower and it's a flower of an or ornamental poppy now the disappointing, I mean, I'm excited to see that. The disappointing part of this is that not long, maybe two or three weeks after we sowed these seeds in this container, they germinated. And I, I think I overseeded and they just went wild. And then I took the cap off and I know that they recommend not having the cap on from day one, but I left them on and it became kind of this uh, tropical environment if you will and when I removed the cap I don't know if it, they dried out I think they might have as the heat started but if we can get this open here you'll see what I'm talking about a lot of them just withered away way and died okay look at that look how how it's suffering though so what it, one of the things I'm learning, and again, this is my first year doing the winter sowing method, but one of the things that I'm learning is that you can't wait until the end of May or June to get these out. You have to get them out when they're ready to come out, and these were ready to come out probably a good three weeks ago, maybe even four weeks ago. And as you can see, I mean, it was literally covered. You couldn't see any of the soil. I wish I had a picture to show you, but sadly a lot of them have died, and so we only have a handful it looks like here. So what I'm going to recommend is we're going to remove this one. I don't know if it's going to make it. It's so spindly, but we'll put some soil in a solo cup and see what we can get. These others I may just leave in here. This soil looks awful wet. We had pretty good rainstorm the other day so I may just leave them in there let that dry out a little bit and maybe give them a little fertilizer once that's dried out a little bit okay so let me get my trusty new friend the Andrew fork 
see if we can't tease this out ever so gently. Well, that's not very gently, but see what kind of a root we have on this thing. Okay. Boy, that soil's awful wet. I think what I'm going to do is try to bury this down a little bit further into the soil here in our solo cup. Okay. So there you have it. We've got it potted up. It's not looking so hot, but we did, if nothing else, get to see this one bloom. <laughs> and the blooms are probably a lot bigger. The, obviously the growth has been stunted due to being in the container for so long here. And I think what I'm going to do is, rather than try to dig these up and repot them, that just needs to be dried out, I think. So I'm going to remove the lid, cut that hinge off. I'm just going to leave it here on the table, see if we can get these to dry out a little bit. Maybe we'll see these grow a little better. They, they look healthier than this one that bloomed as far as the leaves go, the leaves on the plants. So I'm guessing there's probably maybe a dozen there, but I literally it was covered. So anyway, just a quick update there. So we'll leave this little fella here on the table as well. He's a, leaning a little bit, but if they survive, I'm going to put them in this new flower bed that I'm working on. So, all right, now on to the strawberries. Let's see if we can find these strawberries a home. All right. We finally made it to our next project, which is getting these June bearing Parker Whopper strawberries into this little area that we've prepared. And I'm going to use mulch to serve as a ground cover. So we're going to plant these about 6 to 12 inches apart. And we'll do them in two rows here. And the way I usually do it is I kind of create, if you will, a little mound right there. And then I spread the, the roots out around the mound. Kind of try to get them as even as possible. Now, the thing about strawberries, I'll come and show you a closer view here. Let me get one here where I can show you. Okay, we'll bring this in a little closer right here. I don't know if you can see this. So you, here are the roots. We've already given these a good root pruning. And here is what they call the crown. So you see the crown is made up of where the roots connect. They connect to the crown and then the leaves and the flower stems and runners come at the top of the crown. And what you want to do is try to get your soil level or get this planted into the soil about midway into the crown. If you get it too low, or I should say, sorry, if you get the plant too high in the ground and you expose the roots, it's, you know, it's likely that the plant may die. If you plant it too deeply, it may die because you're going to smother out the, the growth that's going to come from the top of the crown. So your ideal goal is to get it right there in the middle. So about right, about right there. If you can see where my index finger is, that's where we're shooting for. Right there. I'm just trying to be careful to 
spread these roots apart. We don't want them to all be on one side. We want them to be anchored into the ground really, really well. And then you just bring the soil back up. Again, the, the thing I try to do is hold on to that crown. Now I'm going to probably pull it up just a little higher than I would if it was just going to be here at soil level because I am going to be bringing mulch in around and so we don't want that to get smothered by the mulch. Okay. that's gonna bring us to a close on this episode thank you for joining me we uh, got 14 of the so-called 20 I counted what I have remaining they sent me 24 they usually do send you uh, three or four extra just in case one or two or three die so we'll get those planted a little bit later this is all that I had room for in this little bed but we've got 14 two rows of seven I'll come in and give these a good drink we'll keep them moist throughout the summer monitor their uh, moisture level we'll also uh, pick any flowers that produce on these plants because what we're trying to do is send all of the energy to the plant itself so that next year this time we will have a bumper crop of June bearing strawberries and you might be wondering, since we already have a strawberry patch, why we ordered more. Well, most of the strawberries that we had ordered previously are ever bearing, meaning they, they produce a big crop in the spring and then throughout the year it's a little bit more sporadic. Uh, and we only had one other variety and that was uh, Honey Eye. And so I thought I would try this particular variety. It's supposed to be a huge strawberry. so. Anyway, we'll let you know how this does throughout this year and in the next season coming up. With that being said, if you like what we're doing, please consider clicking that thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, click that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It's a free subscription. And if you click that notification bell, YouTube will notify you every time we upload new content to our channel. With that being said, please be safe out there. Take care, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.